Okay, this is the third track, and what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the third costliest mistake made in network marketing. What is it? Treating this business like a hobby. So many people, when they first come in, they think that they've won the lottery or something, and they don't understand this really truly is an enterprise. It is a business, an enterprise that you must work like a business. What is a hobby? A hobby is something that people enjoy doing, they like to spend time doing, but they only do it when they have time for it, and they only do it when they get around to it. It's not necessarily a priority in their life, and it's not necessarily something that they do every day or even every week. It's just something that they can notch in their calendar, if you will, in order to do it. There's many different types of hobbies out there. You've got stamp collecting, you've got wood carving, you've got growing flowers. There's so many different types of hobbies. But make sure that your network marketing enterprise is not a hobby. You don't want to treat it like it because if you treat this business like a hobby, you've heard this before, I'm sure, it will pay you like a hobby. Well, let me ask you a question. I have a question I've asked all over the world in just tons of seminars, and it's this. Are you getting a paycheck or are you getting a play check? Let me repeat that. Are you getting a paycheck or are you getting a play check? Are you playing at the business? Because, again, a hobby is also a mindset. See, when you have a hobby, you're in the mindset of enjoyment, you're in the mindset of not being serious per se, you're in the mindset of just getting away from it all and just kind of doing your thing. Well, guys, understand this. Your mindset, as far as working this business as a hobby, people are going to feel that from you. They're going to feel that you're not serious. They're going to feel that you're playing with this. They're going to feel that you're just, quote, unquote, trying network marketing. And they're going to feel from you and in your presence and hear it in your voice that you really don't expect to succeed. It's just a hobby. And see, when you come across as you're not serious as a business person, people are going to treat it like that. They're going to treat you like that. And you're going to hear a lot of negatives. Because if people truly sit down with you and they're trying to help you because you started a new business, or even if you've been in business for a while and they sense, if you will, that you're treating it like a hobby and you're really, really not serious. They will be, well, let's just say, unfortunately, disappointed in the conversation. Because people that want to help people and further their careers do not want to feel this hobbyitis, if you will, from a person. They don't want to feel it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to have anything to do with it. Now, what does a hobby, somebody treating the business like a hobby, look like? First and foremost, there's no daily plan. Unfortunately, many people in this business do not have a daily plan to work. They don't schedule their phone calls or schedule any appointments. It's just whatever happens, they wing it. A second thing that people do when they're treating this business like a hobby is inconsistent visibility. Inconsistent visibility on phone calls, on national, national calls, on events, even doing three ways, inconsistent visibility to your upline as well as if you have one to your downline, plus inconsistent visibility to your customers. The third thing it is when you're treating this like a hobby is inconsistent effort. And unfortunately, many, many times, you know, you're going to have things that do come up that require you, if you will, to move, in particularly emergencies that, that will move you away from your business. But many times we choose not to work the business because, oh, my television on my program, program's on television, or, oh, I've got I've to go out and work out. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But if you're treating this business like a business, you will slot it in, and this comes first during those business hours. See, that's what being serious about this business is. Putting this business first in the hours that you have planned and work this business like you would any other business. Don't treat it like a hobby, guys, because it will only pay you like a hobby. And make sure that you're not getting paychecks, because the paychecks in this business can be huge if you let them. But it all depends if you look at this business as a hobby or if you look at this business as a truly financial secure building vehicle. The choice is yours. Okay, this is track four and the fourth costliest mistake made in network marketing. 
And man, this is a biggie. It's probably one of the single greatest mistakes that take, it takes probably at least 50% of the people out of this business simply because they don't do it. Number four is not talking to enough people. Let me repeat that, not talking to enough people. You know, unfortunately, many people think that you can talk to two, three, four, five, or maybe even 10 or 20 people and get rich in this business. Guys, it doesn't work that way. Let's take a look at Walmart again, one of the great business models today in, in the retailing industry. They don't, they're not satisfied with just, well, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 customers coming in today. They understand something. Enough people is whatever it takes to create the goals and hit the goals that you set. You've all heard this, I'm sure. It is a numbers game. But let me point something out. The reason why the first word in numbers is num, that is what you must become to the numbers. Because sometimes you may, I can hear it now, wait a minute, what about the people, Doug, that, you know, they recruited 10 people and got rich? Well, that does happen, but it's so rare that it's not even really worth mentioning. You've got to become numb to the numbers, and you've got to work the numbers so the numbers can work for you. It's called the law of averages, and I'm sure you've heard this, because the law of averages will work in your favor if you work the numbers. And see, it's not the numbers that you may want to work or you may feel comfortable working. It may take a whole lot more. Your whole focus as far as talking to people is the word enough. That's something that all millionaires have common in this business is they never really use a number as far as talking to people. They just simply say, well, I want to talk to enough people to produce what I need to produce. And that enough may be different for Tom, may be different for Mary, may be different for Sue, but they don't care. They understand that however many people they need to talk to, they will talk to enough people. Now, I want to ask you a question. Again, this is a question I ask in a lot of seminars. If you knew for a fact that if you talked to 3,000 people individually yourself for the rest of your life, you would be making a minimum of $75,000 a year for the rest of your life, would you talk to 3,000 people? Well, the average person would probably say, yeah. Now, what if it took you two or three or four years? No, it wouldn't take that long because you would be running people down talking to people. Why? Because you would have a goal and you would say, I got to talk to 3,000 people. And if it takes 3,000 people, I will make $75,000 for the rest of my life. I'm going to do it. Well, that's the focus you need because you should not worry about, oh, how many people do I have to talk to? What you should be focusing in on is I will talk to however many people it takes. Now, the company I came from, the average national marketing director had personally talked to over 800 people. Now, that was the top spot. And with this, think about it. The average national marketing director was six-figure income. Would you talk to 800 people to make a six-figure income? How about 1,600? How about 3,200? You need to get away from thinking, how many people do I have to talk to? The only number you ever should think of is enough. Whatever it takes. Because understand, people are everywhere. There's more people in this world that are looking for you than you could ever count. The problem is, is you're so focused many times, at least a lot of networkers are so focused on, well, a number, I got to have a number. Well, here's a number for you. You should talk to a minimum of two new people every single day about your business. Why? Because I have found that when people do talk, quote unquote, two new people, that means that they talk to 60 people a month. Out of that, you'll probably end up selling at least 10 to 15%. So that means you're going to have anywhere from 6 to 8 to 10 new customers in a minimum of about 2 to 3 distributors. Now see, that's how you do the business part-time. But to me, that's still not enough. Because if you can talk to 2 people, you can talk to 3. And if you can talk to 3 people, you can talk to 4. And if you can talk to 4 people, you can talk to 5. That is why not talking to enough people gets people out of the game. Why? Because they have so focused on the number of people they have to talk to versus the number of people that they want to talk to in order to move forward. Talk to the enough people number and not any other number, whatever it takes. Because understand this, if you give this business whatever it takes, it will give you whatever 
you want.